Hey everybody, and welcome to Power Vinyasa Yoga. I'm actually streaming out of one of my favorite places to practice today, uh, Ashtanga Yoga Ottawa, which has been closed since the pandemic started. Um, so, got a lot of really good memories of, of some great teachings, um, receiving great teachings as a student in this room. So I'm hoping to film some classes here more often. Let's start at the top of our mat in Samastitihi, feet together or apart. And then take a moment to close your eyes and engage your legs. Bring the hands to heart center. And then bring the awareness in to your breath. Feeling the breath. And slowing the breath down. So with the legs strong and squeezing towards each other, Come into Samastitihi, Mountain Pose. Lift and spread all of your toes, and then play with leaning the weight forward into the balls of the feet, and then lean back towards the heels. You're looking to find that middle point where you can root through the heels and the balls of the feet together. And then with an inhale breath, lift the arms up to the first movement of the sun salute. Exhale, fold forward, gazing down the nose, and then belly button. Inhale, third position, lift the head. Hands can stay on the floor. Fold again on the exhale, contracting the abs, look to the navel. Lifting the chin, inhale all the way up to the first position again, arms overhead, look thumb. Exhale, arms at sides in mountain, samastitihi. Again, inhale to akam, the first position, just the Sanskrit word for one. Dwe, exhale, leading with the chin into second position. Hands down, look navel. Trini, inhale, third position, sometimes called half lift, but it's more of a quarter lift. Exhale, step back, and then lower to chaturanga, bending the elbows, option to bring the hips down. Inhale to upward dog, pulling back. Exhale, downward dog, moving from the core. Step the feet a little closer to the hands and take five slow breath. Reach out through the palm, broaden across the collarbones. And it's really common to dump into the lower back when you're opening the chest. So avoid that by contracting the abs and the buttocks, drawing the front ribs in a little bit. And if you really go for it, you could actually look at your navel, rounding your back. I prefer something kind of in the middle where the chest can still open, but then the abs can support the lower back, allowing it to soften, allowing the tail to get heavy. And then look down your nose somewhere between the legs. One more breath. On your next exhale, lift your heels and look to the hands, bend the knees, inhale, step or jump forwards, and then look up. Exhale, fold head to knees. Inhale, lift the chin and come all the way up. Look up to thumb. Exhale, arms at sides, mountain pose or samastitihi. Round two. Ekam inhale, look thumbs. And dwe exhale, gazing beyond the nose. As the hands come down, look to your belly button. Trini inhale, chin comes up. Pushing into the hands, chaturanga, exhale. Upward dog, inhale. Chin is the last thing to come up. Down dog, exhale. And breathe, reaching out through the palm, but then curling in from the core of the body. Breathing into a strong abdomen. One more breath. And exhale, lift the heels, look thumbs. Inhale, jump. And then look up. Exhale, fold forward, bowing in. 
lifting the chin. Inhale all the way up to first position, ekam. Exhale, samastitihi, arms at sides. Round three. Ekam, inhale. Look to thumbs. Dwe, exhale, keep the chin up. Then follow the nose to the belly button on empty. Trini, inhale, head comes up. Push into your hands. Low plank, chaturanga, exhale down. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale, moving from the core and breathe. If you find that your hip flexors are really tight, it's helpful to use more core strength, but also contract the buttocks together, allowing the pelvis to move towards an anterior tilt, dropping the tailbone. Three more breaths. And exhale, bend the knees, look thumbs, inhale, jump, and then look up. Exhale, fold, and look in. Inhale, lift the arms overhead, chin behind the arms, and then lift the shoulders. Exhale, samastitihi. Bend your knees for sun salute B. Akam becomes chair pose, inhale, same arm to head relationship. Dwe, exhale, fold forward. Trini, inhale, lift your head, push down. Chaturanga, exhale. Pancha, inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog, right foot forward, back foot flat. Inhale, warrior one. Lift the arms, look thumb. And exhale, chaturanga. Try to make it easy. Up dog, inhale, down dog, exhale, left foot forward, back foot flat. Inhale, warrior one, arms up, back leg straight. Exhale, chaturanga. Feel free to lower the knees. Inhale, upward dog, and exhale, downward dog. And breathe, holding the posture, about five breaths. Full exhalation, strong core, and then breathe into that stable base. Try pushing the palms of the hands towards each other while scrubbing the hands slightly outwards. So this creates a balance of engaging the chest while engaging the external rotators of the shoulder. Explore letting the shoulder blades lift to the ears as the heart presses towards the feet. One more breath. And exhale, bend the knees, look thumbs. Inhale, jump. And then look up. Exhale, bowing in. Bending your knees. Inhale to lift the arms just like Akam. Exhale, standing tall, samastitihi. Round two. Inhale, lift the arms like akam, joining hands. Dwe, exhale, fold if you're flexible, straight legs. Trini, inhale, look up, push down. Chaturanga, exhale. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale, right foot forward. Look to your navel as the back foot flattens. Inhale, roll up through the spine, and then lift the chin at the end. Exhale, chaturanga, low plank. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, down dog, left foot forward, back foot flat, look navel. Inhale, roll up with lots of strength in the buttocks and hamstrings. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, breathing in down dog. Curl in. Five breath. A good way to think about alignment is whenever you turn a bone or create a certain intention in one direction, find a little bit of the opposite direction. So 
So if we engage the pecs, we turn the shoulders slightly outwards. If we turn the shoulders outwards, we engage the pecs to create a more neutral, balanced position. If we draw the inner thighs back, we would then contract the buttocks to find neutral. And then next exhale, bend your knees, look thumbs. Inhale, jump. And then look up. Exhale, fold, bowing in. Inhale, chair pose, utkatasana, arms up. Exhale, samastitihi, standing tall. One more. Ekam, inhale, lift the arms to chair, or utkatasana, as it's called. Exhale, fold, look to navel. Trini, inhale, look up, push down. Chaturanga, exhale. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale, right foot forward, back foot flat. Inhale, lift arms, look to thumbs. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, down dog, left foot forward, back foot flat. Inhale, roll up with a heavy tail, buttocks contracting. Exhale, chaturanga, low plank. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, curling in, downward dog. And breathe. Regulate your breath. Create a little sucking inwards below your navel as the pelvic floor lifts up. So this is the floor of your core. In traditional texts, it creates this, this sort of movement of the breath that's described as uh, pulling up a candle flame from the pelvic floor as you breathe in. Or you can imagine breathing up a golden tube as you inhale. As you exhale, try to soften tension in the face and jaw. And next exhale, bend your knees, look thumped. Inhale, jump. Exhale, fold in. Utkatasana. Inhale, lift the arms. Intensely awkward pose. Exhale, samastitihi. So that's the literal translation. It's not really chair. Taking the feet hip width. Inhale, loop the shoulders up and back and lift the heart. And then exhale, lead with the chin and reach for your big toes using peace fingers and thumbs. Padangustasana. Inhale, lift the heart. Spread the shoulder blades. Look up. Exhale, fold in. Slowly tuck the chin. Pause at a sweet spot and breathe. Push your big toes down to lean forward a little bit. If you feel any pulling on the sitting bones, that's a sign you could benefit from using your glutes more. Drop the tail. Contract your abdomen. Feel the breath. See if you can feel it in the lower back and in the sides of the belly. Maybe you can feel it flowing all the way up to the chest. Floor of the core is strong. One more breath. Next inhale, lift the heart and look up. Exhale, step on the palms of the hands. Parahastasana, hands under feet pose. Again, inhale, looking up. Exhale, fold, toning the front of the legs and pushing down through the balls of the feet. And breathe. Inhaling, lift the head. Look up. Exhale, hands to waist. Engage the back of the thighs. Inhale, come up with a heavy tail. Exhale, samastitihi. Usually you open to the right in Ashtanga. I'm going to stand in the middle of the mat. Inhale, separate the feet about three feet apart or so. Spreading right toes, turn the foot out, moving from the hip joint. Exhale, take the right hand down to the shin or hook the big toe. Ooh. 
it's, uh, if the bounce is tricky, you might walk your left foot in a little bit closer. And if it's too much to hold the toe, slide your hand up your leg. Breathe deep. Gazing at the top thumb. Think of squeezing the feet towards each other to help stabilize the pose. The slipperier your mat, the better. And moving from the core, inhale, come up to center, parallel feet, left foot out, right heel back. Exhale, take the left big toe or hand to shin, and then look to the top thumb. And just like in downward dog and the other poses, we can really contract the buttocks and the back of the legs to help stabilize the joints, to help relax the hip flexors and drop the tail. You may feel a softening in the lower back as you do that. And strong in the core, inhale to come up, revolve triangle, parivrita trikonasana. Right foot out, left foot steps in more. Twist on the exhale, left hand to the shin or floor, top arm up, and look at either hand. On the exhale, look down. Inhale, come up, turn to the other side, left foot out, right heel back. Twist through the exhale, taking the right hand across. And breathe. Find a focal point for the eyes to rest on. Exhale to look down. Inhale, come up, turning to the side wall. Exhale, samasthitihi. Longer stance for parsval konasana side angle. So inhale, taking the feet wide to preparation stance. Spreading right toes, turn the foot out. And as you exhale, touch outside of the foot. Press your leg out into your arm. Gaze to the top thumb. And breathe really strong from the back leg all the way through the core so you can draw the front ribs in and drop the tail a little. Throat is very gently constricted. Jaw relaxed. Eyes steady. Inhale to come up. Other side, left foot out, right heel back. And exhale, take the left hand down. You can drop the right heel back a little bit, allowing the inward spin, which also encourages the pelvis to turn a little bit towards that left foot. Once you're in the pose, contract the buttocks to reverse that movement. Gaze to the top thumb. On the in-breath, come up, parallel feet, right foot out, lunge on left toes, stepping closer, and then exhale, help the left arm outside of the right leg. So that right leg comes into the midline for a moment. And then hands to prayer or touch the floor with your left hand, in which case you can look to the top thumb and reach. Over time, try to pivot the back foot flat. Squeeze the buttocks together. Exhale, look down. Inhale, come up. Turn to the other side, lunging, feet on separate tracks. As you exhale the twist, help your left knee into the midline a little. Right arm across, hands to prayer or touchdown. And then turning the chest open. Gaze towards the thumb or look down your nose if the hands are in prayer. Start to squeeze the buttocks together. Start to press the leg out into the arm. Reversing the actions that brought you into the pose. Mm -hmm. 
Exhale to look down. Inhale, come up, turning to the side. Exhale, samastitihi. Parsvo or prasarita padottanasana, almost minced my Sanskrit. So wide-legged fold. Inhale, take the feet apart and catch your waist. Exhale, fold, touching the floor. Again, inhale, take the feet a little wider and look up. You can stay there or exhale to fold if that feels comfortable, walking the hands back underneath the elbows. And connect to the strength of the legs, plugging the thigh bones up to the hip sockets. Draw the arm bones back and open your chest. So if you're feeling really strong and stable, option to lift the legs up, push into the hands. This is not an ashtanga, it's just a really fun move. So you can go from wide legs to having one leg up, one leg halfway down, squeezing the midline, and switch wide legs, other leg up, squeeze the center. Extra challenge, bend your both knees and move into crow pose from there. So once the knees are near the arms, squeeze the heels, slowly try to lift your head. Strong in the fingertips. Slowly bring the head down. And then land the feet. Inhale, lift the heart halfway. Exhale, walk the feet in a little, catch your waist. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale fully. Inhale, spread the arms out, B variation. Exhale, catch the waist. Again, inhale, lift the heart, and then the chin. Exhale, fold. And then think of hugging the thigh bones up to the hip sockets. And breathe. This is extra challenging if your mat is slippery and worn out like mine is. <laughs> but it really brings in the secondary action of squeezing the heels towards each other, contracting inner legs and buttocks together. And work with sensitivity so you can still fold while squeezing the midline. If we just squeeze too much, we end up kind of paralyzed in the pose. You can play with the effort. Next, exhale, bend your knees. Inhale all the way up. Exhale fully, C variation. Inhale, spread the arms. Exhale, interlace the fingers behind the back. Inhale, open the chest. Try to pull the hands off of your sacrum. Exhale, fold forward. And breathe. And if your hip flexors are going crazy, try to really use your glutes. It'll move you away from the full depth of the pose a bit, but it'll also help protect you. On your next inhale, come all the way up. Exhale fully. D variation. Inhale, catch the waist. Suck in the low belly and look up. Exhale, fold and reach for the big toes using peace fingers and thumbs. Again, inhale, lift the heart up. Exhale, pause there, or fold, bending into the elbows. Option to bring the crown of the head towards the floor. But keep the feet rooted. Heels are still firmly planting. Inhaling, lift the heart halfway. Exhale, pause there, bring the feet a little closer. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, mountain pose, samastitihi. And then take the arms apart. Inhale, feet about three feet apart. Exhale, turn the shoulders in and bring the fists together or take the palms together behind the back. Right foot out, left leg spins in. On an inhale, lift the heart. On the exhale, fold over the right leg. And so if you, instead of folding all the way over, try lifting the heart for a few breaths, keeping the back fairly straight. And this really encourages the smaller glute muscles to participate more in the movement. And that's really key to hip stability, along with the sense of drawing back through the right hip by squeezing the heels towards each other. So you can probably feel the hamstring muscles contracting to work the pose as well. 
A little more quad contraction. Go ahead and fold forward as much as you're comfortable. Softening the action of drawing back a little bit. So you can play with it. Play with the effort back and forth. Richard and Mary describe it as balancing an egg on an A-frame. I thought that was brilliant. So we can't really put it into words. You've got to feel it. And then next, exhale, bend your right knee. Take the fingertips to the floor past your foot. Inhale, lift your left heel, and then fully lift the left leg. Lift the heart as much as you can. Pause there on the fingertips. This is a great place to be. As you contract the quad, spread your toes, and try to spread the weight through the ball of the foot to the little toe mat. At the same time, try to hike up the left hip, so that creates a more neutral position for the weight-bearing leg. So three more breaths. If you'd like to play around with arm balancing, plant the hands, shoulders over wrists. Using all those connections, swing with the left leg, rocking onto the tip of the toe, or perhaps bringing that right leg up. Gazing between hands, just like Akam. And then slowly exhale, land the feet. Inhale, come up, turning to sidewall. Exhale, hands to prayer or fists together. Inhale, left foot out, right leg spins in. Exhale, fold over the left leg. And then relift the heart on the inhale. And we'll find that uh, halfway position again, encouraging the chest to open and encouraging the smaller glute muscles of the left leg to contract, those smaller buttock muscles. So as you push down through the ball of the foot, squeeze your heels towards each other, toning the backs of the legs. You can probably also feel the inner right thigh contracting as it squeezes to the front heel. Softening that effort a little bit, engage the quadriceps, folding on the exhale as much as you're comfortable, and breathe. Try to use your core in this variation, encouraging the spine to round as your head gets close to the leg. This helps uh, reverse the forward tilt of the pelvis. You get an anterior or posterior tilt rather, dropping the tail and lifting the pubic bone, keeping that left hip happy. Next exhale, bend your left knee and take the fingertips past your left toes. Inhale, lift the right heel, so we're bringing the whole body forward over that left ankle. Next, lift the right leg and lift the heart. Light touch on the fingers, they're just there for balance. Engage your quads, and access those smaller glutes and hamstrings, and breathe. You can also hike up the right hip a little bit and then squeeze it into the midline, helping to level off the pelvis. It's not about how high your leg goes, it's more about that inner squeeze. Connecting to the pelvic floor and the inner thigh muscles, even the length out through the crown. We'll play around a little more. You can plant the hands and try leaning shoulders over wrists. A little swing with the right leg, rocking onto left toes. That might become a handstand hop. If you have a wall behind you, you can take your right heel to the wall, scissor the legs, over time, bring the legs together, keeping the legs off the wall in that form. And then slowly land the feet. Inhale, come up, turn to the side. Right foot out, left toes in a little. Exhale, half moon, bend your right leg, lift the left leg. You could stay on the toes, lifting the heel. Next phase, lift the leg a little more and start to reach your right fingertips towards the floor. Imagine a straight line from the second toe through the center of the heel. Try to reach the fingers along that line. And then with the core and glutes working together, imagine the whole body stacking along that line. Try to find those smaller glute muscles again. A few more breaths. All the foot roots. 
And then exhale, slowly land. Inhale, center, turn the left foot out, right toes in a little. Exhale, bend your left knee, lift the back leg. Imagine that line again from center of the heel through second toe, reaching the fingers along that imaginary line. It's not about touching the floor, it's about connecting to your stability. So that often means actually lifting the heart so much that you can't reach the floor anymore. That might even mean using a prop under your hand, which is fine. And exhale, landing the foot. Inhale, back to center. And exhale, samastitihi, mountain pose. Just take a breather. Just going to adjust my mat. Slides around with all these flows. Utita hasta parangustasana, extended hand to big toe pose. So standing on your left foot, lean the whole body over that left ankle, pick up the right heel, and then lift the knee. You can hold the knee with your right hand. Option two is grip the big toe with your right piece fingers. Give you the side profile. So the main emphasis is sucking in the low belly and then puffing up the chest. From that frame, we can then start to lift the foot with the knee bent or eventually straighten the leg. Five breath. We'll say it's already three. Think of pushing the big toe uh, forward into your fingers. On the next exhale, open to the right, look over the left shoulder. You can modify holding the knee or the shin. Inhale back to center. If you're really flexible, exhale to lift with the arm, bow forward a little. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, hold the waist, keep the leg up, low belly strong, five breath. Burning in the quad is normal here, especially if it's been a while. Whew. Three more breath. And exhale, release. Oh, that was a real burn today. Jogging will do that to you too. So we'll take that left leg up, it's all good. Hold your knee, puff up the chest. Second phase, grip the toe and lift the foot. Third phase, leg straight. Five in the middle. As the leg stays there, think of dropping the hip a bit and squeezing the leg to the midline, activating the inner thigh muscles and the glute muscles together. And that can help relax the common tension that we get in the hip, especially around the TFL, which is the top of your IT band. Really common ache. Next exhale, open to the left, gaze over the other shoulder, five breath. Find a single point of focus. Inhaling, come back to center, woo! Optional bow on the exhale. Lifting the heart, inhale. Exhale, hold the waist, keep the leg up for five breath. It's two, three, four, and five. Exhale down. And then half lotus forward bend. So modification, feet apart, right ankle over left thigh. Exhale to bend your standing leg, hands at heart. Maybe you sit a little bit lower and bring your hand to a chair if you need it for balance or touch the floor. Full form of the pose requires full knee flexion, so if in doubt, leave it out. Inhale, placing the foot, bind with the right arm. Exhale, left hand down. And breathe. Fine breath. Inhale to look up, exhale, pause. Inhale, come all the way up, really challenging the strength of your glutes. Exhale, lower the right foot. Other side, 
It's a modified form. Inhale, left ankle over right thigh. Bend the standing leg, pausing there, or touching down. Flexion, heel to navel, and then foot to hip crease. Reach that left arm back to bind, and fold. Five breath. And then inhale, lift the heart halfway. Exhale, pause. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, lowering the foot down. And we'll meet at the front of the mat in Sama Stitihi. Inhale through a sun salute, lifting the arms. Exhale, fold forward. Lifting the head, inhale. Chaturanga, exhale. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward dog, bend your knees, look thumbs, chair pose, inhale, hop forward, rooting the heels down, lift the arms, and then sit a little bit higher and bring the shoulders forward. So the chin is behind the arms, gaze down on the thumbs, and breathe. If you're feeling it mostly in the low back and hips, that's a sign you can benefit from really exhaling and consciously squeezing the buttocks. Take the shoulders more forward, spreading the shoulder blades. Over time, as you feel the glutes, the arms go up higher and higher with the chin behind the arms. Just like Akam. Exhale, hands down, tone the quads. Inhale, look up and bend your elbows, bend your knees. Crow pose, so as the hands push towards each other, Elbows can squeeze in a little. Bring your knees to the backs of the arms. And then start to lean more forward. Eventually the feet will come up as the heart dives down. Round your back as much as you can. For Chaturanga, lift the chin as you shoot the legs back if you're going for it. Otherwise, step back. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Warrior one, look to your navel and step the right foot forward, root the back heel. Inhale, roll up, and then lift chin behind arms, just like an utkatasana, five breath. If the neck hurts or if you feel any low back pain, shoulders forward, really spreading out from that foundation. The pose can grow over time with practice. Enjoy the journey. Glutes, core, all working together. Hamstrings toning to help drop the tail. And then exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, warrior two. Left foot back a little further. As far as you're comfortable, bend the right knee. Gaze over your right middle finger for five breath. Loop the shoulders up and back. And then reach out through the arms. Tall through the crown, ears back over shoulders to help really puff up the chest. This is also called Uddiyana Bandha with a light neck lock, Jalandara Bandha. Now an inhale, straighten the legs, walk the left foot in. As you exhale, lunge on left toes and take the hands forward past the foot. Picking up your right foot, round your back. Just like crow pose, bend your arms. Press the hands together. Maybe the left leg comes up. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, down dog. Left foot forward, back heel roots down. Inhale, roll up to warrior one. Straightening the back leg. Gaze to thumbs. Choose your variation. And breathe. Eyes are focused and steady. Relax the forehead and the jaw. Relax the eyes. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, warrior two. Take the right foot a little further back if you can, angling it towards the right side of the mat, and then loop the shoulders up and back. Bend into the front knee and breathe. 
Try to straighten the back leg and try to squeeze the buttocks. And then find a steady gazing point over your left middle finger. This is like the antidote to uh, smartphones and social media. Look at one thing and avoid distraction. Keep the focus. Be disciplined. Inhale, straighten the legs, right foot in. Exhale, lunge on right toes, hands down. Pick up the left foot like crow, rounding your back. Bend the arms. Maybe the right leg comes up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Bend your knees, look forward. Inhale to sitting. Dandasana staff pose, hands by hips. Five breath with a tall spine, roll the shoulders up and back, and try coming onto the tips of the fingers to make the arms longer. If you have long arms like me, you might be able to push your palms down while keeping the heart up. Fingertips is a much more accessible cue here. The legs are engaging, and then you can squeeze the inner thighs a little while slightly turning the hips outwards, just a little bit, with the goal of relaxing the TFL. It's that area that tends to really tighten up with too much inward spin. And so we use inner thighs and glutes and quads all together to help regulate that tension, dialing it down. On your next inhalation, lift the arms like acum. Look to thumbs. Exhale, reach for the big toes. Bow the head down. Again, inhale, lift the heart. Soften the low back and look up. Exhale, five breath, keeping the legs straight. Slight tuck of the chin. Lengthen up through the crown and lift your heart, five breath. Keep a little suction inwards below the navel. Allow the shoulder blades to spread apart, just like in plank. At the same time, pull back on your feet. If you're using a strap, that's fine. You would then pull back on the strap. So you're co-activating the muscles that push with the muscles that pull. And that's the central principle of vinyasa yoga, is co-activating opposing muscles to create a bandha in every joint in the body. And then inhale, look up. Exhale, option to fold with the knees bent or straight if you're quite flexible. Five breath. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, look to your navel, place the hands by your hips, and then try to lift the buttocks off the floor. So lean forward and press up on the inhale. Ooh, that was hard. Exhale, hands back half a foot for the next pose. Purvottanasana, point your feet, dig into the heels. Inhale, come all the way up, lifting your hips primarily. Strong in the core to help support the low back. Once you're feeling really good, try to release your head back. Three more breaths. Squeeze inner legs, squeeze glutes. This is more about the hamstring strength, though. Exhale, slowly coming down. Beautiful. And then we'll take the right foot to the inner thigh for Janu Shasana. About 90 degrees between the knees. Take an inhale to lift the right arm up. As you exhale, reach for the outside of the foot or the shin. Inhale, lift the heart, and look over your left shoulder, turning the ribcage to the left. You can stay there or exhale to fold, aiming your right kidney to your left knee, hiking up the right hip to create more space around the left hip. If you are in that position, feel free to catch the foot with both hands binding and pulling back, gazing towards the big toe eventually, but keeping those actions in the body. Richard Freeman calls this uh, kidney twisting or kidney loving. So you're aiming your right kidney to your left knee. Inhale, lift the heart. And exhale. Bring that left leg outside the right leg and twist again. So it's still twisting in the same direction. 
Just to really illustrate that principle, you can take your right arm outside the leg or modify holding the knee with your hand. If you're a bit looser, you might try binding under the knee or catching the arch of the foot with the left arm behind the back. Five breaths. And then inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, release the pose. Take hold of your left foot and cradle rock that leg side to side. So this is like a combination of the last two poses. And then bring your left leg over your shoulder as much as you can. So maybe you're pausing here and enjoying a nice stretch in the back of the leg. If you're a little bit looser, take the hands down and then right leg up. Squeeze your left leg into your shoulder and then rock forward to lift the hips, arm balancing. If that checks out, try crossing right ankle over the left and bend the to center and vinyasa, you can step plank or do an arm balance to Ekapada Kundiasana, taking the right foot through. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale through sitting. Janushirshasana A. Exhale, left foot to inner thigh. About 90 degrees between knees. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, reach outside of the shin or foot. Inhale, lift the heart and look over your right shoulder. Hike up the left hip to drop the right hip. Option to stay there or fold on the exhale. Inviting a little kidney love. So strong in the left side of the core, the obliques are working. The obliques are the abdominals that are used for twisting. They also help with a full exhale. And if you are quite loose bowing, you can go ahead and bind around the foot, grabbing either wrist, bend the arms to draw your heart forward. Imagine the tail dropping, buttocks contracting, legs squeezing into each other squeezing the midline. So those cues are extremely relevant if you're flexible and you're trying to manage a hip issue. Allow that right hip to stay turned out a little bit instead of inner spiral. See if you can feel the TFL relaxing at the top of the hip, outer hip. And on the inhale, look up, exhale. Take the right leg across, half lower to the fishes, and then we'll keep twisting to the right. So more and more kidney love. It just gets deeper and deeper, that kidney love. Left hand on the knee, or take the whole, whole arm outside. Maybe you're threading underneath the knee in that form, or maybe you're catching the arch of the foot. Five breath. And even in the modifications, it's really the same emphasis. The arms are a bit of a distraction. It's really about moving from the core of the body, which everybody can do. Strong on the left side. Try to get long up the right side of the belly and ribs. Leaning into the front of the mat. Inhale, look forward. And then exhale, lean back a little. Take the right foot and cradle rock that leg side to side. And then we have options. We can put the right leg over the shoulder or intend it there for a nice stretch in the back of the leg. Good. If it goes pretty far back, you can try the arm balance, squeezing the leg into your shoulder, hands down by the hips, lift your left leg, and then strong in the core, round your spine and rock forward to lift up. If you get lift off, maybe across left ankle over right, bend the arms as you straighten the legs. Take a few breaths. Eight angle pose. Hands are pushing in, elbows are pushing in. Squeeze between them. Inhale, come up. Vinyasa of choice. Left leg goes through for ekapada if it's in your repertoire. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, from the core, downward facing dog. And then inhale to high plank. Exhale, lay down onto the belly. Bring your legs together, arms at sides. Shalabhasana locust. Inhale, lift the shoulder heads away from the floor, lift the legs. 
and breathe as you press the fingernails down. Keep looping the shoulders away from the floor. So that's the banda of the shoulder, the balance of opposites. Keep squeezing the legs and lifting them, and then try to straighten them again. It's going to be really hard. Be where it feels good but difficult. Exhale, hands by low ribs, five more. Lift the shoulder heads, keep the legs up, and start to push into your hands a bit. Balance the push with pulling back. And then feet to the floor, hip width, chaturanga base, root down through the toes. Exhale, try engaging the core, lifting the hips an inch, and then come down. And repeat, exhale, core strong, tail heavy. Inhale down, three more to go. Exhale, maybe a little lift, maybe a little more. Inhale down, a few more to go. And then inhale to up dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale through sitting. Bring the legs out in front. Exhale, lay down with core awareness. Setting up for bridge pose. Feet about hip width. We'll do a really nice vinyasa. So rest your hands on the floor next to your hips. Relax your belly. Invite a little suction inwards below the navel to expand through the heart. Try to loop your shoulders back into the floor. On an inhale, lift the arms straight back over the head. On the exhale, lift the hips up. Inhale, return the arms down. Exhale, lower through the vertebra. And again, inhale, lift the arms. Resist gravity. Exhale, lift the hips. Scooping tail towards the knees. Inhale, slowly bring the arms down. Exhale, lowering through the vertebra. And then on your next one, inhale, lift the arms, but then bend the elbows and reach your hands underneath your shoulders as much as you can. Good. Now slightly draw the elbows towards each other. Push into the index finger knuckle. And then keep that squeeze between the elbows as you lift the hips up. You can stay there. Second phase, push through the palm and then send the hips forward, coming into full wheel. It helps to keep your chin tucked a little bit to get that openness through the chest. What little thoracic extension we have, we need to make use of as much as we can. And play with rocking forward and back, straightening the legs a little and then bending the knees a little more. Gradually release the head to look between the hands. Maybe you can inch the hands a little bit closer to your feet. And then look for stillness in the pose. Five more breaths. Exhale, come all the way down. Lay onto your back. And we'll do another vinyasa related to the bridge one. This one's going to involve moving from the core, curling the tail up. So to start, we'll take a long breath in, reaching the arms to the back of the mat, and then take an exhale to relax there. See if you can feel the natural curve of your lower back. Below that, the sacrum is on the floor. On your next inhale, keep the sacrum on the ground. Bring the legs up all the way up to the sky. Exhale from the core, drawing the front ribs in to lift the hips. Lift the legs as high as you can. Over time, you'll be able to lift the spine. Inhale, slowly lower through the vertebra. As the sacrum comes down, exhale, lower the feet, bend the knees. That's one round, round two. Inhale, legs up. You may have to keep your knees bent to keep the sacrum down. On the exhale, strong in the core, lift the sacrum, lift the low back, maybe even the mid back, bringing more weight onto the shoulders. Inhale, try to slow the lowering, vertebra by vertebra. Exhale, bend the knees, lower the feet, find the natural lumbar curve. Inhale, lift the feet, knees bent. Straight legs if you're flexible. Exhale from the core. 
curling up, lifting the pelvis, lifting the low back as much as you can. Inhale, lower through the vertebra. Nice and slow. Exhale, lowering the feet. Last one. Inhale, float the feet. And exhale, curling up. Inhale, slowly come down. This is really going to challenge your core stability. And exhale, bend the knees, lowering the feet. Plow pose. So inhale, bring the feet up. Use that same action on the exhale. <sighs> bring your feet into your hands with your knees bent or straight. And then we'll take the feet wide apart. Widespread variation. And take five slow breaths. Engage the glutes, turning the hips outwards. Use the exhale to connect with your core and then keep that engagement to rock up, bouncing on your sit bones. Inhale. Five breath there, lift the heart as much as you can. Gaze down the nose, lifting the chin. Instead of actually looking at the nose and going cross-eyed, think of like gazing beyond the nose. So I'm actually looking at this beautiful window that's like 10 feet in front of me. This helps uh, encourage muscles around the neck to release. On your next exhale, let go, coming into the wide-legged fold. And with an inhale, lift the heart. You might support yourself on the fingers. Option two, engage the quads and spread the arms. Exhale, hinge at the hip. Catch the top of the feet and breathe. Imagine putting two half moons together so the legs are pressing out to the sides. Abduct the hips. And then inhale, slowly come on up. Exhale, bring the soles of the feet together, heels near the pelvis. Again, inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, fold over, leading with the chin. You can gently squeeze the elbows in by the sides of the body. You can also draw them a little bit off the body to push them into the legs. Depending on how long your arms are, I suppose. And then inhale, slowly come on up. Exhale, cross the legs, vinyasa. Step to plank on an inhale. Exhale to chaturanga, lowering knees. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, from the core, downward facing dog. Inhale, lower the knees down. Exhale, interlace the fingers, forearms to the floor. Placing the head down. Inhale, lift the hips, walk the feet in. And as you exhale, curl in from the core, just like we did on our backs. Maybe you can lift the legs up to headstand. You can modify by keeping your toes on the ground and playing with exhaling to curl up, lift your heels. Inhale, reach the heels down. Exhale, curl from the core, strong in the wrist. Inhale, reach heels down. And then keep repeating that movement. For those of you really comfortable in headstand, exhale, try lowering the legs halfway. Inhale, come up. If that's too much, bend your knees. Exhale, draw your thigh bones to the sides of the belly. Inhale, come up. So it's a much easier way to control the movement in terms of the strength of it. Three more to go. And then come all the way down. Child's pose, legs together. Cradle the back of the head in the hands. The forearms can take a little bit of weight. And then relax into the pose as much as you can. Rounding the back. Deep in the breath.
and inhale, come up. Move into plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga. Explore pushing off the toes. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, come through sitting. So simple cross legs. If you have a half lotus, you can take your right foot to half lotus. Otherwise, simply cross one leg over the other. With an exhale, bring your right arm behind the back, reaching for the left hip or the shirt, whatever you can hold on to. So turn your chest to the right, and then side bend, engaging the left side of the core, leaning over your left knee. You can also explore releasing the head down, and then lift and lower the chin, inviting a stretch into the right side of the neck. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. A few more breaths. I'm just going to do it in lotus now. You might even feel a really nice stretch on the outside of your right hip or getting into the lower back, QL. And then move from the core coming up, change legs. So other leg on top if you're doing cross legs. If you're doing half lotus, take the left foot to lotus, Padmasana. Left arm behind the back. And then as you turn your chest over to the left, take a breath in. Shoulders away from the ears, exhale at the side bend, leaning over the right knee. And explore little movements. As the right ear releases down to the shoulder, you can explore lifting and lowering the chin, stretching into the left side of the neck. And then inhale back to center, sitting tall. You can rest your hands over your knees or over your lap, however you're comfortable. And then focus in on your breath, rooting down through the sitting bones. Slight tuck of the chin as you draw the ears back over the shoulders. Make a little bit of sound with your exhale, soft ocean sound, ujjayi breathing. And squeezing up the pelvic floor, suck in the low belly a little bit and take a slow breath in. And exhale. The heart can drop a little bit, but still try to keep a sense of lengthening up through the crown. And draw the pelvic floor up. Slow inhale. So this keeps a little suction in below the navel, which is called uh, Mula Bandha or Uddiyana Bandha, uh, depending on who's teaching. Take a few more slow breath. Try to make your exhale a little bit longer than your inhale. And you can use your abs to get the full depth of the exhale. And make your way into Shavasana. Stretch your legs out in front, taking the feet apart, and relax down onto your back, taking rest. Completely let go of any control over the breath. Scan the face, releasing all tension in the forehead and jaw. Relax the throat, letting go of any breathing technique. There's always that one person that keeps doing ujjayi and Shavasana, and then they do it when they're leaving the studio. So try to let go of your technique so you can go 
completely released into a more meditative state. Complete non-attachment. Allow the belly to completely release. Allow the jaw to relax. Completely let go. And take as long of a rest as you're able to today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this uh, challenging and interesting, and I really hope this worked. (laughs) So I guess I'll find out now. Thank you so much. Oh, it worked. Sweet. Awesome.